Say that about all my animals. <laughs> oh yeah, our new kitten's been a pain in the ass this morning. Since since I woke up this morning, he's just been into everything all day. I'm like, what is what is with you? Is it gonna be a full moon? Man, if it gets cold, our cats go into fucking jungle fever, run and craziness. Yep. Yeah, they're like little Aslans in heat, just <laughs> going nuts. Oh God, that's gotta be. Terrifying. It is kind of crazy. You know? Welcome crazy. to Deep Night Revelation. We'll be picking up where we left off last week. Uh, these guys have rescued a bunch of these aliens. Uh, they have learned that their names are the Alakaya, and uh, they they rescued about 500 of them. And so uh, they they were on a colony ship that uh, was basically doomed. Uh, it was sinking lower and lower into the atmosphere of a gas giant, and uh, they were they they made a daring rescue to get these uh, Alakaya off, and uh, so they the basically uh, Deep Night Revelation is bursting at the seams. Uh, a ship that has normally has a crew of about 500 uh, now has an additional 500 passengers. Uh, that are bunking in the cargo hold and in the uh, in the hangar deck, and uh, pretty much in the hallways, anywhere they can they can fit them. And so they have agreed to take them back home, and they have been pointed. <coughs> uh, they've pointed their long range telemetry to this system that we see, or this grouping of systems that we see. And the Alakaya have pointed to the central system here, uh, Alaka Hearns, uh, that they they refer to as the home place. Uh, but before we get started, we'd like to thank a friend of the Greenwater Guild Hall. None of these are sponsorships or partnerships of any kind. They are just products that we really like. And tonight we would like to thank uh, Dogmite Games. Dogmite Games uh, makes beautiful wooden tabletop accessories for your uh, D and D and any other role playing game, and all of their items can be customized. And they've got DM screens and uh, dice vaults, dice trays, dice towers. They have this really cool thing called the Player Vault that I highly recommend checking out. And like I said, all of those can be customized. If you order something that's customized, it'll usually ship in about six to eight weeks. So if you are looking to get something really fancy and customized for Christmas, that ship may have sailed already. Don't quote me on that, though. You might you might want to get in contact with them and see uh, what the deal is. But, um, man, the clock is really ticking. Um, but they also have a lot of beautiful items that they keep in inventory on their website. If you, if you select uh, in inventory stock. Those items usually ship in about one to two business days, and they're all gorgeous, and they, they've got amazing collections. Um, if you are looking to purchase, we do have a 10% discount code that is available. Uh, when you uh, are checking out, uh, after you put everything into your cart, just use the code FRIEND in all capital letters, and that will get you 10% off your purchase. If you like the show and you want to help us out, we have a merch store via Zazzle uh, that 100% of the proceeds from that store go directly back into our channel. Helps us pay for subscriptions and bandwidth costs and, you know, all the little nitpicky stuff uh, that <laughs> it, it amazes me. You know, I, I realize that inflation is a thing, but some of the things that shouldn't be going up are going up <laughs> for no apparent reason. Like, Oh my God! There's a shortage of CO2. Like, no, there's not. What are you talking about? But anyways, 
Uh, so everything is the charge of CO2. Yes. Yes. I found that out today. Uh, going to go get, uh, for instance, I went to go get a canister of, um, gas for my, for my soda stream. And it's like, Oh, it went up like $2. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Probably that damn $15 an hour minimum wage. <laughs> Anyways. Um, uh, so they, That's a pretty good percentage. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, all these prices keep going up. So if you want to help us out, uh, we've got T-shirts. We've got buttons. We have a – now we have a line of hoodies that have uh, character portraits on them from our Braunhaven game that happens on Saturdays. Um, we have a fleece blanket. There's a there's a beer stein. There's a bunch of stuff on there. So um, if you want to help us out, go get yourself a T-shirt and a button, and uh, we appreciate anything that you can do. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so it was you guys uh, where you were located at. Um, it was going to be about four weeks worth of travel time, um, not four weeks worth of jump time, but about four weeks total. So probably about two jumps, three, three jumps, probably three jumps, and uh, yeah, about that, about three jumps. Yeah, sorry, doing the mental math. Like, yeah, that works. About four, four and a half weeks. And so, uh, I guess the question is, uh, so if we are starting from this, this hex right outside, uh, where do you want to, and you've got four, you can do four parsec jumps, where do you want to go? I guess is the lead question here. Do oh, we have any information? Which way did they come? So, this is their home system, which is where you're, or what they call the home space. Um, and they're at proto jump two, so they couldn't jump four. Right. Well, and here's something to so in this four weeks, you've so uh, one of the questions was uh, Space Wizard David Andreich. He spent some time uh, learning about the Alakaya and uh, basically spending time with um, with the guy that's that you've already rescued. Um, uh, and the other one that he's spending a lot of time with. So, if you remember, um, there was the the worker who jumped into no. the crate and shut the door at the last minute and floated over, and, and perfectly gauged how to throw the crate, jump into it, uh, timed it, and was able to land perfectly in the airlock on the other side. And as soon as he came out of the airlock, or as soon as he came out, he was ready to get to work and start helping. And that hasn't stopped. He is still going around the ship to help out. And so David Andreich has spent some time with him. And one, one of the things that, uh, so David Andreich is able to uh, basically give a little bit of information about uh, the Alakaya themselves. And I'm trying to turn on that page. Yeah, I've got all kinds of questions about them. So he tells you, uh, and, and a lot of this, um, uh, and he, he has gleaned a lot of this both by talking to um, the thinker, um, Akronika, and, um, and to this worker. Um, and I don't remember his name just yet. I will tell you in a moment. But what he has learned is that between the two of them that uh, – that there are multiple cats. Now you've already, you've had your fill of dealing with the breeders. And so those are typically the only females. And um, it's never stated uh, blatantly, but these guys, the breeders are generally of animal intelligence, which you, you have, they don't communicate much more than grunts and pointing. And, uh, and essentially, all of the other cats um, kind of, uh, eh, I don't want to say, they don't worship them, but they have in, their entire community is based around them. So, um, and, and essentially, all of the others are all males in this community. So you got one breeder and like 60 males. And these these other males will of course be of the different casts. Oops, we lost we lost Randall. Well, we haven't been seeing you for a minute, man. I mean, we've. Did you lose me? 
yeah, uh, Randolph and I were in our own little thing for a second. Oh, shit. And then now he's lost. Uh, here he he's is. coming back. I mean, like the last three or four minutes, we haven't heard jack shit you said. Okay. And evidently you didn't hear our conversation. I had no idea that, that no. I had blipped out. Uh, evidently, well, we are we have like three atmospheric rivers going overhead, so if I disappear... <laughs> I heard, I heard you the, I heard you the whole time. If you float off? <laughs> I, was with, I, was, I was with you the whole time. So. Okay. So, uh, so David Anderich has been talking with, the, with Akronika, the thinker, and the worker who uh, came over. And this worker has been basically working nonstop for you guys, basically tr doing everything he can to help out on Revelation. And so David Anderich has, has surmised... Uh, come to the to the point where he has realized that there are these multiple casts and of course you already know the breeders are the only females they are uh animalistic uh, they the most that they can communicate with is grunting and pointing and basically letting everybody know either they're happy or pissed off doesn't seem that they have too much emotional range in between those two states and those are the only females and one female will there will be they don't worship them necessarily but they are the center of their community so there will be like 60 males based around this one breeder and of those males they they are all different castes so you'll have thinkers uh, that are scientists merchants diplomats uh basically you know the technological part of uh the alkaya society um they are of a light light build, and uh, uh, they have a strong aptitude for for puzzles and mental pursuits. Uh, that next on the on the list is the warrior cast, who you have also run into. These guys are um, there now. What David Anderich has noted is that there are not as many warriors, and he's he suggests that perhaps in the past. Uh, there were probably more warriors, but because Alakaya society has now reached around a tech level eight, that warriors are less common because they don't have to go out and hunt as much, um, because they they've they've changed their society has changed to a more technological one where they're they're farming and whatnot. And uh, but the but the warriors are more agile. They're the the chitinous plates on their body are a little bit thicker. Um, and uh, essentially, they are more skilled um, in the use of weaponry. And he, he notes that weapons uh, take the form of. Find it. So this this is a common tool, um, both by warriors and by thinkers. But warriors view it as a weapon, while thinkers view it as a tool. And he says that the weird thing that he has noted <clears throat> is that they can they can set one of these things down in a corner, and another warrior or thinker will come up and without knowing who it belongs to. Will know whether it is considered a weapon or a tool. So perhaps there's some kind of pheromone uh, interaction that lets these guys know, like like insects, they know who it belongs to or what cast it belongs to. And then he tells you that the third cast is workers. And he says workers are, he says, at first he, he was under the impression that they were, um, and he, he says he doesn't, he doesn't want to sound cruel. Um, he, he says he was under the impression that maybe they were slow. Um, but he has since come to realize that it's not necessarily that they are slow. Um, they may not be as, uh, as smart as the thinkers, um, but um, they, are, they have intelligence in their own right. And um, basically, that's all they do. They do the, the labor jobs. They're big. They're strong. They're even stronger and bigger kind of than the, than the warrior caste. And that's their job is they just they move stuff from here to there or they build stuff or what have you. What kind of uh, life expectancy do these things have? I mean, from like the time they're born, how quick does it take them to kind of reach some level of maturity? And then, you know, of course, how long do they generally live? That's a really good question. I may not have an answer for you. 
me. Yeah, well, you'll have to make it up. You don't <laughs> have it. So uh, I would I would say that actually their lifespan is about uh, probably about that of a human's. Uh, I mean, not a human in your age, because I mean, humans in in your in your time frame, I mean, life expectancy is like 120, 125, uh, and that's without anagathics. Um, but um, yeah, these guys would probably have about a 90-year lifespan. I would think that uh, they probably um, they grow to maturity faster. Yeah, yeah. So this this one that um, uh, performed the cool calculations in the in the the cargo thing and made it over here yes yeah i i would like to collect some of his dna <laughs> okay. ambitious uh yeah, oh man he, he i mean he anything, thinks fast he doesn't have any he, problem with that at all anything he can do to help yeah see and i mean god you don't, ask, you don't get well if i can make three or four of those clones I mean, if they learn fast and they mature fast, you know, I mean, they would be, be excellent resources for the ship. Uh, and and yeah. to keep Sarda happy, we'll treat them like they're sentient beings and so, with respect. So and, this worker, like they're what? Yeah. So this worker. You have to repeat is, that. Some of us are old. This worker's name is Zanak. Zanak. And so the other, so David Andrike, uh lets you know that um, so. Most of the society, the way this whole thing works is that the males at, at their, you know, kind of their uh, coming of age ceremony, their, their, their whole uh, puberty, puberty thing, they, they present themselves to the female or to the breeder of their right. community uh, in an attempt to mate. And the, the breeder then makes the decision whether she wants to deal with them uh, uh, or not. If, if in many cases, of course, she accepts, and then there are babies that come later. Um, but for those that are not accepted, um, they are not necessarily shunned. Um, they they are kind of considered um, and not outcast. That's the wrong word. Um, they are. Let me see. What's a expendable? Kind of yes. Um, so they are called. It's it's like they they got a real ant like basis for society. It's a little bit different as far as you know the ant you'd picture to have this one boss queen. So but... so basically these these uh, these rejectees they don't they're not kicked out of society but um, because the breeder doesn't want them the idea that they might be a little bit more expendable definitely that that's a societal norm and so a lot of these guys are given uh the job uh, the yeah they're just called rejectees um they are given the job of being like space you know space exploration is a big one um, you know, they'll man, they'll, they'll be the crew of a colony ship, um, or things of that nature. Um, so like I said, they still for, they still perform a important function to the society, but they, they're on that, that outside edge, you know, they're, they're, they, they realize that they're expendable and, and they're. I guess okay with that. <laughs> I mean, you know, what else are you going to do? Uh, we got to tell them about the fungus. The mold. Okay. Well. You know, we, we've got to spread the word so they know to look out for it. I mean, it's... Well, okay. So, before you before you jump to that. So... The first thing that that David Andreich find, found really interesting in his discussions with Akronika and uh, and see, I've already forgotten this guy's name. Um, Xanax. Yeah, Xanax. Yeah, that's, that's as good as any. Um, <clears throat> he found that there seems to be um, 
very little in the means of conflict or or war between their communities on Alaka Hearns. And so <clears throat> they don't have anything that would be construed as like, you know, large scale wars. There have been uh, skirmishes and disputes between individual communities, but there it, it's never broken out into anything resembling what what we would consider a war. Um, so from what he is gathering, their their armament is exceptionally light yeah. compared to, to what our tech level 8 society would have been. And none of their ships are armed. <clears throat> uh, they just, they breed. It's what they do. Well, I mean, they don't need weapons. They just out fuck everybody. Well, and, <laughs> yeah. and this is, and so, and he says this is particularly um, perplexing because, um, and he, he, he tells uh, Akronika, he says, so tell them what you found. And Akronika um, lets you guys know <clears throat> that um, he was going over some of the data systems that came over from the Alchemira, the the colony ship that you that you that is now destroyed, and uh, from the information that he is seeing, the jump drive on that ship didn't malfunction. It was sabotaged. Oh. And well, we need extra guards around our engineering. He has he has not told anybody else what he has found. In fact, uh, Akronika hasn't even told Zanuck because, um, I mean, Zanuck's a worker, and I mean he he doesn't really know Zanuck. And one, he's a worker, and he doesn't know if Zanuck's gonna panic. He doesn't know what'll happen. And he says, "But this is you know." Akronika tells you this is uh, usually terrible who would try to purposely kill breeders? Probably somebody that's jealous been rejected. The, 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 that concept is still completely foreign to him. He, he, you know, you know uh, even the reg rejectees wouldn't wouldn't go to that level of um, they, they wouldn't feel the need to kill the breeders. It, well, it's just it's it, it's it's absurd. He he's uh, he, he says that if he he if he had not seen the data himself, he he would never have believed it. Well, that's I don't I don't necessarily. I, I think we should just guard the engineering and and the bridge real good, and uh, we've got better armaments than them. If it comes down to it. Oh, and, completely. And, In fact, yeah. most of those aboard your ship are uh, in a mix of awe and and fright because they realize how how far advanced you are compared to anything that they have. Sarda, you're going to give them a, a thing, a crash course on jumps? jump drives so they can do it more safely, right? I heard him say that, but let's see if he does it. Yeah, I don't know how much access to their actual tech I have to actually diagnose problems not, with it. I mean, there's not a whole lot, but uh, go ahead and make an engineering J-Drive plus intellect or education. Maybe good to try it at their home planet. Uh, we don't get it here. Engineering. Well, y'all were up in their shit. You were in their engineering area. I rolled. I rolled poor. Well, I, I rolled really poorly. Well, still, that's an eight. That that's fine. Yeah. So, Akronika so kind of helps you out, and he he uh, is pointing out. Uh, uh, through through the data that he he got, and it, of course you can't read any of it, but there's diagrams, <clears throat> right. and he's pointing stuff out, and it is making enough sense to you. 
that you are able to go over this and you see what he's saying um there there doesn't appear from the from the last tech diagram there does not appear that uh, there was any form of actual uh mechanical or electrical gotcha. malfunction but yeah um what it does show is that the at the very last minute power was shunted to the drive causing okay. the miss jump gotcha uh, you so randolph and bocephus um you guys can are kind of learning also from david and Reich. So from this telemetry data that came in, all of these systems that actually have a name are systems that have been uh, visited by the Alakaya. So um, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have a colony there, but they've at least um, gone through and done a rudimentary scout of the area. And a lot of these systems, they may have uh, mining uh, systems set up or things like that. Um, he does mention, where is it? Um, do we know which ones have gas giants? Uh, well, the only yeah. two that make sense are the ALS BD, BGM or the ALS SM4. So I um, can tell you. ALS both of those get us within one strike of the home world. I mean. Yeah, ALS BGM. Let's see if I can find it. Let's see where they were going with their organization on this, but it wouldn't have been my first choice. Uh, so, uh, ALS BGM is a binary system. Uh, it has a G8 yellow primary with an M7 red close companion. The system density is 8. Uh, so yes, there is a, a gas giant, a small gas giant available in ALS BGM. Um, SM4 is a solo M7 red main sequence primary, and the system density is 11. There are there are three gas giants in SM4. SM4 probably has better fuel possibilities then. Yeah, there's there's at least two large and one small in SM4. Which one is it? on here? He does mention that there is a system that they refer to as kind of uh, unlucky. Unlucky. Yeah. Yeah, but that the doesn't necessarily mean fail. fail. No, they never come back. It's all that we know. Right, and and that's exactly what he tells you. Um, I believe it was SK one. Uh, no, it's not SK one. It is. Well, it doesn't matter. SK one works as well as any. Um, SK one. They have sent several. Uh, well, and I say several. They've sent three um, scout missions uh, over the past. 15 years to SK-1 and none of them have ever returned. So ALS SK-1, the reason why it is not named is simply because none of their scouts have returned with any data. They don't know anything about the system. And as far as the the thinkers on Alka Hearns is, are concerned, they kind of think of it as a boogeyman out there. They think that there's something bad out there. <clears throat> there, it, it's kind of their version of like the Loch Ness monster or Bigfoot. They think that there's, you know, some some conspiracy factions think that there's something in that system that is actively preventing their ships from returning. There are, um, of course, then the scientists, uh, the thinkers that are like, no, it it it's just shitty luck. I mean, let's face it, our drives aren't that great. Sometimes ships just don't come back. Um, so. So nobody really knows what's going on in that system. Uh, so, but he, he, even even uh, Akronika, who is a thinker himself, <clears throat> he says the likelihood is that it, it just misjumps and, and bad luck. But he says, you know, there's always some part of him that thinks, what if, you know, there is something in that system that is preventing them from coming back? 
So then my lack of fuel. Shall we suggest we go to ALS session four? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, you can certainly do that. So my question is, uh, on your journey there, you said you were going to tell them about uh, the Deep Knight entity. How are you? How are yeah. you going about that? And and are you are you only telling Akronika about it and kind of detailing it with him, or are you holding like a a meeting and <laughs> telling all of them, hey? You know, well, like, oh, the mushrooms. You might want to kill more than one thinker, but they don't necessarily have a leader, right? They're no, just kind of not, hiving it about. Yeah, not. I mean. Hmm. No, they're kind of at this point they're kind of leaderless, and this is part of the problem too. So, so out of that, you got what three three of the five uh, breeders, um, and there is some depression amongst the community uh, because two of the breeders died. But um, even worse than that, some of those two breeders that died, some of their community were rescued. So these guys now don't have a community and they 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 have a number of questions because this is never this has never happened to a colony ship before so some of their questions are well does that mean that we're now rejectees or will we have the chance to become a part of another community or you know they don't they don't know what that means and so there 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 is some some outright depression going around which is one of the reasons why Akronika came to Sarda to show him the that the drive was uh, purposely sabotaged because he doesn't dare tell the rest of his people because that's only going to make their situation worse does that make sense yes yeah that does make sense but it's it's alarming um how many survivors? Of, there were no survivors of that ship, were there? Well, I mean, you mean of, of what was left that got sucked into the gas giant? Oh, the, that they believe that ship was the one that was. Uh, that was I, one. I, yeah, okay. I was I was thinking the one we encountered before. No, that that colony <laughs> ship with that colony ship that got sucked into the gas giant. That was the one that was sabotaged, which is what is so shocking is because. They, whoever did the sabotage, would have known that there were five breeders aboard that ship. Right. Okay. Well. So, I guess my question is, how do you, how do you want to go about telling them about the the entity, or are you just telling Akronika? You... Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it could be a can of worms. Well, maybe we could. Uh... <laughs> put together using the translator and some of our uh, texts to put together a video presentation. Yeah, I think that, by now we probably have one. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you would. Yeah, because I mean, <laughs> I would think that you would have one because uh, anybody who knows anything about any kind of military types, you almost have to, to draw it out in crayon. <laughs> Right. Well, if yeah. If you were the guys on the ground, you're gonna have to use crayons so that they can understand what you're saying. Uh, so let's <laughs> just take our standard, uh, you know, video that everybody watches, you know, uh, that explains the mold and and. I, I you know, just I just got an image in my head of the cartoon how to videos from like Fallout right. Four. Yes, yeah, <laughs> like, that's what I'm talking about. It's like a, yeah, it's 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 basically like a new age Fallout 4 video, <laughs> and we'll run it through the translator. The guys walking along. Uh, yeah, Miss, so Miss Miss Minutes had that in Loki. The yeah, right, yes, right, Miss Minutes. Yeah. How you how you got off track? But uh, yeah, that that is that's and just run it through the translator. Have it have it translated as best as they can. And then, you know, we can do the same thing with Sarda's jump drive thing. And then just as we drop them off, we can go here. Here's some videos that you guys can watch. Uh, we've we've we're providing a medium for you to watch and listen. Uh, enjoy this shit. Talk to you later. And then we just leave. And uh, and that will be that. Yeah, so, I, I agree. So. So you're going to show them this video, or are you prepping this video and giving it, giving it to them? It's a parting gift. Okay, I see what you're saying. 
All yeah. Right. Okay. So uh, we don't have to deal with anything. I mean, this is the perfect thing. We can tell them anything we want. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, you know, we're not telling them shit uh, until we drop them off. All we're telling them now is that they're welcome guests and we are going to take care of them as best we can and deliver them home in a safe manner. And, uh, and I think we should tell all of our crew that one of them is a saboteur and, uh, you know, they can fuck around and find out. Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, we need to be on the watch to make sure nobody fucks with our shit because I, I mean, all these people can die. That's fine. But our ship and all of our people and well, our DNA samples need to need to go. go it could on. have been, it could have been sabotaged by ground crew. I mean, it's not necessarily somebody who was no. on the ship. That's it, it could have been a bad astrogation fucking role. You know what I mean? I well, mean, no, this was purposeful shunting of power. Uh, give me one second. There we go. That's uh, so yeah, no. Th I mean, this was there was there's no doubt this was a, a shunting of power at the very last second. Uh, so whoever did it was a. I, I suppose they didn't necessarily have to be aboard. They could have programmed it into the into the system to do that automatically. Um, but yeah, I mean, it it was. But they'd have to be a pretty damn good programmer, and they'd have to be a pretty damn good engineer. Right. So. Obviously, they were a thinker. Oh. It, as, soon as, as soon as that thought dawns, then Akronika starts to really spaz a little bit because, uh, I mean, that means someone from his own cast must have done that. Well, it's, it's written in everybody to do bad things. Right. So, That's true. Um, yeah. Um, if, if he wants... Uh, you know, I I just don't know how much we gain by really spending our time and resources, you I know, uh, digging into this. I mean, okay, yeah, you got jacked by your own people. Sucks to be you, but we're taking you home, right? And 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 you guys can sort this shit out amongst your own shit. So you uh, spent. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Randolph. What were you saying? I agree. Okay. Oh. So you spend about let's, three or four let's days. Go, let's go get rid of these people before, before you're on live sport. Right. Well, okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, you spend another three, four days in SM4. There is a uh, command meeting. Captain Bel Belmont uh, brings you guys in um, with his uh, XO. Um, and <clears throat> there is, uh, you know, some concern. Uh, Captain Belmont kind of tells you, he says, it, it's hard it's it's difficult to how to put this but so of course uh, saving these 500 lives has put a strain on the resources of of revelation uh, both in the in the capacity of um, life support and of course food and so um, you know his his hope is uh, that uh, of course, at Alaka Hearns, they can replenish that, and it, there's nothing to to state that they wouldn't be able to. Um, sure. So far, it seems like that's a, a, a perfectly acceptable solution. And he says that, um, <clears throat> so plan on a bit of a, a longer stay at Alaka Hearns than perhaps we normally would. Um, we might be there for two weeks while we replenish supplies. Um, but... Um, he, you know, Belmont tells you, he says, this is a, a, an extremely unique opportunity. Um, first contact situation. He says, so far, he says, I think that we have an ace up our sleeve in that we rescued these people twice. So, you know, hopefully they're going to see us as, as, um, as friends, you know, we're, we're, we should be. Or the cause of the explosion since we've now encountered three crashed ships. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, well, and that's the other thing too, is that you have some of these remains still, um, you know, that, that Bostephus was studying so that you can return them. I mean, there, there's a third plus for you guys. 
in that, you know, hey, we're giving you back the remains of some of your explorers that died that we found, and then we rescued this guy, and then we rescued 500 of your, your people on this dying colony ship. Gee, they, they made it really far. Right. Yeah, no. some of them. Uh, well, it's amazing how far you can get when you miss jump. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I guess maybe that was it. <laughs> These uh, breeders that we have uh -huh. is, you know, we've got three of them. Is one of them more revered than the others? No, they all seem to be. It, it depends on who, and that's a weird question. So, no, they, it, after you kind of do your own private polling, um, they all seem to be about equal. Um, mm -hmm. And it, but as far as which one of the breeders is more important, really depends on who you ask because if you ask somebody from that breeder's community of their course, breeder she is the most important but he is quick to remind everybody that all breeders are are of importance and it's kind of a a reverence in that you know uh with the obvious without breeders none of us would would exist and tanzik or xanak or Zanuck. whatever yeah, yeah. Which, which is he attached to one of the breeders? He is not. So Zanuck is a rejectee, and he was stationed aboard the Alakamira, um, essentially, I mean, obviously, as a worker. Um, and basically his job was to ferry freight and crew, uh, you know, and, and <laughs> luggage. And um, now that the Alakamira is gone, um, he has come to you. And uh, essentially, uh, I mean, the guy, he's a worker, but he's, he, I wouldn't say that he, he's less intelligent, but he is not dumb. And essentially what he tells you is, now that the Alchemy is gone, I'm out of a job. Oh, he can come with us as far as I'm concerned. I, that's, fuck it. that's what he, he wants to do. He says he oh. sees that there's a lot of stuff that he could help out with on the ship and he thinks that he would be an excellent worker and, and and he goes on with a litany of of his strong suits of you know if you tell me to move something i'll go move it <laughs> you know that's that's what his job is and he he's showing any any problems with our diet no none whatsoever oh, okay good. Has, both, has the doc here checked him out to see if he has any any, def, any nutritional deficiencies not that he could tell yet, but <laughs> parasites. Yeah. Oh, no. he's got aphids. I'm sorry. No. Well, <laughs> he's got yeah. aphids. Before, oh, is he a rose or a, or a zucchini? <laughs> before, we, uh, before we get out of jump here in this home thing, uh, can can I attempt to uh, if if the time that we picked him up and we moved here, uh, in theory. I should have time to make an adult breeder if I successfully clone her and do her up in my vat. And so the smallest frame one that they have, okay. uh, I want to go ahead and attempt to do that in this, in these, at least, at least, you know, two weeks is really all I need. Uh, if I successfully pull my, according to the readout of this fucking cloning thing. Yeah. And, so and I've got to successfully clone something somewhere. Somehow, some way. <laughs> now, well, go for it. So, yes. Uh, and hold on, I need that book. That's in the about a water bear. That All they got to know how to do is fuck. I mean, that, it's, I mean that come on. That is in the robot book, if I remember correctly. Is it? Yeah. I got to get some of these books. So, it is... Robot book's good. Yeah, robot book is it awesome. Is. Yeah, yeah. I would say that of their source books, um, it is next to the companion. It is probably one of my favorite books. Unfortunately, um, we just don't do a lot with robots. Uh, yeah. there's, there's a lot of st more stuff in there than just robots, though. Uh, clones, maybe. So you didn't tell me any of this shit. I need a, I need a gun-toting robot. Can I get one? There are a couple of those. I'm in the game. Bring me that. 152. 
Hell yeah, way to track that shit down. So that's the cloning... Yeah, here it is. Uh, cloning vat. It looks like an autodoc. Uh, it is... Tech level 13. What does it let you do? Can we... 50 times the accelerated rate. Yeah. Uh, I will allow you to do that. Um, make a medic plus medic plus intellect or education. You get a plus two uh, because of your med base. All right. These are D sixes. All right. So, medic, education, plus two, let it rip. Green dice. All right. Look at that. 18. Okay. Oh, my. Yes. You, no. the, you the doc. Are you inserting wafer jacks in his skull? Doing all no. This is just a straight clone. going to... Gonna give the straight clone. Uh, In a, and so you got an eighteen. Yeah. <laughs> make a make a life sciences plus intellect. Actually, no, not life sciences. Um, uh, it's the other one. Um, ba, ba, ba. <laughs> make a social sciences plus intellect or education check, and you get a plus eight to that. A plus eight. Yeah, it's the effect of of his cloning. Twenty one. Okay, so uh, you Sorry. successfully clone a breeder, and you you the way that you you didn't even have to go get uh, more cells, and the reason why you didn't have to get more cells is because if you remember, at one point you injected one of them. With something, right. with something to knock them out. And so, yeah. keeping that needle, you still had, well, or hypo, you still had their DNA on the end of that. On the end of that. So, yeah. that's what you use to do this cloning. Now, the, you have, full, you've grown this breeder, <clears throat> and, um, at first, she acted, uh, you know, like the other breeders, but I mean, it's, you're not really familiar. I mean, nobody's ever cloned one of these things before. So, I mean, you don't, you don't know what that means. You know that when you cloned a monkey, it came out and, um, it, it was a little special for a while. And then it started acting like a regular monkey after that. So you thought, well, maybe, um, you know, maybe they act differently. Maybe, you know, she acted like reg like a normal breeder, grunting and, and pointing. After after a couple of days, though, um, she has now started to develop speech. Well, there you go. And you are you are uh, determining that she is um, far more intelligent than any of the other breeders. All right. She can take the system down from the inside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, at least no. one. At least one clan. <laughs> right, well, I will tell her that she will be revered in her society, and she will bring new heights to their civilization. Uh, and give her a T nine med kit. So we've got we've got a whole bunch of these guys that are uh, clanless. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to suggest, but, you know, I want to promote a, 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 a free-spirited, strong woman that does not bow down to the misogynist ways of their people. Are you sure and, about uh, that? No, not really at all. But, <laughs> so, uh, so, I, I mean, she's uh, smart and talking. I mean, you know, what does she want? So far, she hasn't left your lab. Um, yeah. She doesn't, and honestly... Uh, she doesn't know anything about her own culture. She has learned your language. She doesn't even know Alakaya's language. She's learned your language. Well, that's that even presents. more impressive. So she's learned Anglic in like yeah. three days, and she's she's able to 
uh, for the most part, carry on conversations. I mean, ab at about the language level of a 10 year old. Wow, that's really impressive shit. Um, well, if she's learned my language, uh, she definitely can learn the language of her own. Will people, she do right? maintenance work? Make a uh, life sciences. <laughs> make a life sciences plus intellect or education. Oh, Again, will she do maintenance work? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, engineers need more she, help. She's still biologically. She's still of the breeder cast. Yeah. So she's still limited in what she can do, but she seems uh -huh. smarter than the other breeders. I'm 13 in it. So you kind of look over the the raw data coming from the cloning vat, and the raw data that comes back is that you find a recessive gene that was in that sample that was that was moved to the forefront and activated when you made the clone. Hmm. Thoughts? I'm going to have a meeting with my crewmates. Okay. Bring them in, you know, invite the command crew. <laughs> You've told nobody that you cloned one of these things. Right. So I just want to kind of invite everybody on in and be beg like. For, 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 or beg yeah. for forgiveness and to ask uh, for permission. Uh, so, yeah, I, I guess I'll start off with, you know, I, I took some experimental liberties. And uh, this. You did what? Well, I cloned one of their breeders, and uh, this I seem to have awakened a recessive gene, and uh, she's really smart for her. Gene, kind. that says that the, the males yeah. only have the males only have dominant parts. Uh, but they're double dominants. Maybe, but uh, oh, they here have she to is. <laughs> she's learned our language. Uh, what should we do with her? Uh, it. I, <laughs> Kill it with fire. I mean, I think it, it might be rather cruel to turn it over to life on its planet it doesn't understand. Well, we we could bring uh, I think, with, I, with I, her I, and, and Zantac, we could bring this species to our space on the way back. I mean, that could be a thriving breeding community. Just I think I think our ship's policy of no children is a probably a good one. <laughs> that's that's a good point. Well, I mean, if they develop fast, you know. But I, I agree. I don't. Well, she's. What does she say when proposed? You have to do gene manipulation work on uh, the male. Returning, you know, to her people, where she'd be basically left in a room to be. Well, no, she could do what she wanted as long as she put out, you know. <laughs> she gets to pick who she puts out with. So from a biological standpoint, that is, um, that of course is appealing to her. <clears throat> but her question, so, and I guess it would be her question: How much about? And I mean, you, you may, you can tell her what you know. Yeah. Uh, but how much about what you know of Alakaya society are you telling her? Are you telling her that the other that she's of course smarter than the other breeders? Maybe. I think honesty is definitely the best policy. When you know we want to give her as much information as we can, so she can make the best informed decisions. But I mean, you know, should I think it would be neat her for her to should, go back. Yeah, if if she were to go to her people, uh, we'll provide her with. You know, so her, her immediate response. Uh, I mean, you you tell her what little you know, and you tell her um, that the other, essentially, that the other breeders are basically of animal intelligence, and she finds that. Um, uh, I guess you could, yeah. I guess horrific is the right word. Um, she. Um, she immediately she she honestly tells you that um, that her immediate goal would be to uh, go about uh, changing that society. She's not going to be able to. Well, I don't know. I she's can't a tell her. She's a she's a recessive, double recessive. Well, the males well, are double double. Uh, 
that's with natural DNA, and I've done some serious. That's true. You're going to have to change a male around to have some recessives. Oh uh, no, I'm, I mean, I think if she thinks she could go to it, I mean, there's a. If we presented her, and and there was just a, a language barrier, she's smart enough to learn their language. It's, I it's think that's a genetic barrier. I don't care about that. They will find out about that when we're gone. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was confused. <laughs> I, I thought you cared about that. <laughs> I'm sorry. She, she might be able to do a change. She might not. Uh, the odds might be against her. She could maybe promote some kind of social change. Who fucking knows? Well, and the, but, maybe. Uh, so the thing is, though, about Cephas, this, this, you, there was nothing that you did, and there's really nothing that you can see that the, I mean, it's possible that something weird happened with the cloning vat, but there's nothing that was done to manipulate this to create her. You know, maybe being, a, maybe a lifetime of being forced to be uh, a breeding creature kind of makes you go insane. Well, Maybe. It, the data that you're seeing looks a lot more like evolution that literally happened at, you know, 5,000 times the speed because it was in a cloning bat. Well, I'm good with that. Let's That's... reintroduce this, this fucking superior breeder to the gene pool and, and go, what's up? Uh, we, we can... We can we can have a big party and present this, and that will lift the spirits of all of these bug people on our ship and make things pleasant for when we arrive. Okay, so you guys come out of jump <clears throat> into the Alica Hearns system, yeah. and this is, of course, what the system looks like. Um, and uh, B is the name of their Alica Hearns is the name of their star. Uh, number three is actually their home place, uh, Alakaya Allah. But number one is from when they did not clean up after the dog. <laughs> yes. Uh, number, uh, I can actually tell you about number one. It's got a name. I bet it's been destroyed. <laughs> Asteroid Belt, maybe? I think it is. Here it is. Alaka Hurts. So number one uh, is Gallad. It is a uh, it is your your astro scientists show that it's kind of an anomaly. Um, it was a planetoid cluster that seems that at one time it was actually a terrestrial planet. Um, they are guessing. Um, so uh, let's see, Ikanla uh, number two. <coughs> uh, was actually a transient body that passed through the system and came into orbit. And it's in a kind of a wobbly orbit. And they think that what happened was it collided with Galad and tore it apart. And uh, the weird thing is that rather than forming a belt, the, the, it just kind of stayed together and, and orbits in that pattern. It's very strange. Um, but... You are detecting that there is, uh, there are small, there is a small colony or a group of, col excuse me, a group of colonies in this planetoid cluster. Um, that that uh, there are uh, two to three hundred um, people living in in this planetoid cluster. Uh, like I said, in Kanla is a transient. It is a super Earth, so it's just a really big uh terrestrial world um <clears throat> seems that it was it was a rogue that was captured by alica hearns and uh caught in its orbit um they do have a uh colony on there um even with the slightly higher gravity um they they have a colony there with population in the tens of thousands um cabinet number four or out here, a uh, small terrestrial planet orbiting outside the system's warm zone uh, has a thin envelope of atmospheric gra uh, bleh, gas that is not breathable, and most water on the planet is frozen or found uh, deep underground in aquifers. 
And then Ebri, number five, way out here, um, is a small gas giant um, that has faint rings of ice crystals. So, you know, there's there's your refueling point right there. Um, number two, Alcala, um, is the homeworld. Uh, it says detailed on page 93. Here we go. Um, <clears throat> da, da, da. Is it, though? So it is... Uh, Alakaya is a fairly lush, uh, not not necessarily a uh, heavily jungled world, but there it is a it is a garden world. It is um, uh, there are seas. You would you would guess that it is probably about sixty percent water, um, large land masses, continents, um, forests, and uh, you know. Uh, Shirt sleeve weather, for, uh, good atmosphere. You don't need to re uh, bring rebreathers. You notice that uh, even at tech level eight, <clears throat> your sensors are not coming back. That there's a whole lot of taint. So um, usually, what tech level seven, beginning of eight, is usually about industrial revolution. Um, you're not seeing that. Uh, you know, you're not seeing what you would expect with that. There's not the the coal burning and things of that manner destroying the atmosphere. Um, whatever route they decided to take, that it is much cleaner. But uh, also, uh, whatever route they took, they they obviously uh, sped things up a bit because I mean, look at their jump drives, right? Um, for the most part, the does their ship have fusion drives? They do. That's pretty impressive for an eight. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, they th so uh. yeah. They're they have uh, essentially tech level nine um, <laughs> prototype yeah. type stuff. They they kind of um, recklessly skipped some processes. Is, is the best um, way of describing that. How's um, their communication tech? So their communications tech is. Uh, radio um you know they don't have anything like uh mason communications or anything like that but uh it is radio and you notice i mean floating around the system uh, there is a secondary star out here um that floats all the way out at the far distance which is probably one of the reasons why uh Ikanla was captured um and thrown into a wobbly orbit is because there are two stars here but <clears throat> There, the thing that you notice immediately is that there is a lot of traffic in the system, um, and you see a bunch of their ships uh, traveling around. Um, basically, you know, going from planet to planet, doing uh, what you would expect of a fully populated star system, um, taking supplies back and forth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, these are stats. This is what a Alakaya exploration ship stats look like. There's still no weapons. So, I mean... Yeah. Now, they, now the exploration ships, uh, you know from uh, what you've learned, uh, are, all, are always um, manned by rejectees. And so yeah. they have this, their, what they're calling the proto-jump-2 drive. Yeah. Um, and then the you do see uh, one colony ship that is outbound, uh, leaving the system. It is another uh, ship similar to Alakamira. All of the colony ships are slightly different. They seem customized to to whatever uh, group of breeders. It's it's like they they build them individually. Um, these things are like twenty thousand tons, and uh, they of course only have the proto jump drive one because. The drive, the the J2s are so unstable that they they wouldn't uh, trust their breeders aboard a ship with a J2 on it. Uh, but as soon as you come into the system and they see that you uh, are there, um, they uh, immediately uh, you start getting flooded uh, with a number of communications, uh, both from. Um, uh, Alakaya Allah and from several of these other ships, um, basically, uh, you know, 
uh, they're they're not actually directing the conversations to you. the The entire system starts to get flooded with communications of, um, they're like, "Oh shit, we're not alone." <laughs> they they've never seen aliens before. They didn't know that there were anybody else out there. Well, we need to uh, just go to their home world and not talk to them at all and be real mysterious about it. I think that'd be fun. Yeah, it's not like you know, just you, right? not say shit and just <laughs> go straight at their home world at top speed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, that, of course, is an option. I concur. <laughs> That's the way That's all scary. the aliens approach Earth. You know, we can get rid of these people quicker. Go to, go yeah. to their home world and be, show me what you got. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, I'm going to name my take my me breeder. to your breeder. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to name my breeder Eve. So, so okay. that's what I refer to her as from all on, and I will give her like uh, the Art of War on audiobook and shit. Oh, that's great! So, yeah, <laughs> so she'll have something to listen to, and and then kind of tell her like, you know, man, I don't really know, but it really looks like you can just yeah, shape your audiobooks you shape of uh, Sun Tzu's The Art of War and Machiavelli's The Prince. Yes. <laughs> And you know, and, and uh, we're gonna include Clausewitz, right? Well, you know, the Monroe Doctrine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, but anyway, and and you know, uh, tell her you know, man, what was you know, his you, name? Lindell. Yeah. Lindell. Lindell's can, book on the history of World War Two. She can. She can. It's about two thousand pages long. Her own preferences. <laughs> yeah. You know? So yeah, she she's basically you know she's still in your lab. She's oh. listening to your audiobooks, um, and part of that is uh, as you are approaching the world. She she does mention that she is um, somewhat aghast at how violent your species is. Well, you know, we're not that way, and, and I'm not human. So yeah, no, you're not that way at all. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is this oh. is this is an honest truth about our species. Sh yeah. Chandra would like to argue with you about that. <laughs> I'm not violent at all. Like I am just the ship's doctor, and uh, and I'm not human and counselor. Sure, sure, your gun collection. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you know, I can do like, that. Like, look, you know, should I bring it out? It's not. It's not necessarily the the conversation about going to war or making war, but think about this as you manipulate your surroundings to make things the way that you want them to be, and and you know you could, you know these these ships they're all they're all tailored to their breeders and everything. You can you know you can use that to your advantage if you so choose, or you can just exist. So as you are approaching Alakaya Allah, you do start to receive, you see that there are a number of smaller craft that are uh, coming up from the planet. And they are sent, there are about five of these smaller craft. And they are sending direct communications to you that's, that um, basically comes to, oops, we lost. We lost Sarda. Yep. Sarda, oh, we're going to talk shit to him. <laughs> <laughs> Sarda is going to come back, and you should gonna... see Sarda having sex with that female. Yeah. Yeah. Wonder what He'll kind of back. babies they're going to have. Yeah. He'll be right back, I'm sure. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wonky Was that fun, Jar Sarda? We saw you with the little girl. <laughs> the, the little rear. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No, she's full grown. <laughs> that's right. She's, yeah, that's right. She's full grown. So, the, basically, oh, these messages are coming nice. up from these, <laughs> these five ships are, you know, uh, something along the lines of, you know, greetings, unknown starfarers. Uh, what, what brings you to our glorious home space? Uh, we have um, survivors of a crashed ship that we'd like to deliver 
to their home world? Uh, they there's there's a basically a pause in all communications, and uh, then uh, basically on all channels, you're just starting to get questions left and right. Well, who who are who who are these survivors? What ship are they from? Wh where did you find that? You know, just a ton of questions coming back. Well, name both ships. Uh, the ship that the uh, that crash landed on that one planet where we rescued uh, Bug Bug. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Eric and the Alakamira. Um, so and, and then and then the ship that we just recently rescued. Uh, yeah, so you you tell you broadcast that you that you know first you found this exploration ship, and of course they're all like, oh oh my god, that's that's so great that you brought uh, some of our you brought our explorer home and uh, and uh, your great heroes and uh, a lot of fanfare, and then you bring up that you rescued uh, people off of the Alakamira. And the immediate question is, were you able to rescue the breeders? Three of the five, and we'll name them. And and so they are, uh, you know, of course there is sadness at the loss of two of them, but you are the the Deep Knight Revelation is being lauded as this great hero for rescuing uh, this colony ship and and rescuing these breeders. The immediate thing that comes uh, that is quickly made evident is that there doesn't seem there there doesn't seem to be a central authority uh, for this world or for for the system for one and for two um, there's no um, they have absolutely no set of procedures to deal with you they they didn't like i said it never even crossed their mind that there was another intelligent species out there especially one so advanced and they never expected to meet you and so because they'd never thought about it, it never dawned on them what what happens if we do make first contact and so there there's just this flood of chaotic messages coming in well we need our food and and some resources replenished uh, is taking on the extra load has drained us down and and so if you could prepare that uh you know we will head to your home world and uh and uh you know we are feel your loss on your breeders and and we've been able to uh to gift you a new one they're baffled. Uh, they, they, they. So, the, the immediate. So the, the immediate response to that is uh, yes, of course. Come to Alakayala, and we will, we will give you anything that you need to replenish your, your food stores and, and anything that you need. Uh, it is yours. Uh, you are the heroes of our people. They are baffled when you when you mention that you have given them a new breeder. Their their immediate question is, did did one of the breeders give birth while while they were on your ship? No. They're completely confused. That's fine. <laughs> they they're completely baffled. Um, everybody, make a yeah. recon plus intellect check. Oh my goodness, I actually did something. <laughs> okay. Ten. God, man, I'm doing good tonight. And, and a night. So you all got it. So you guys see that So there are these five cra smaller craft that have come up from Alakai Ala that are kind of flying in formation with... Um, with Deep Knight, they haven't requested docking or anything like that. Um, they, they're still. I mean, they're flying in formation, but they are keeping a bit of distance. They're probably about two two thousand clicks out, um, so they're still in close range. But um, they're keeping their distance because they, they they've never seen a ship like yours before, um, they, and they they are rightfully scared. There is a six. I mean, we're yeah. talking something almost four times bigger than their colony ship. Right, right. Yeah, they're, they're yeah, 
and so we have guns. Well, and well, we don't know what those are yet. <laughs> we'll have to demonstrate them. They, they do know what they are, and they are they have recognized that your ship has a lot of them. Now, as far as uh, what that means, they don't know uh, because they don't have. Uh, apparently they don't have any weapons on their ships, but they do recognize what a gun is, and they, well, they, have seen, they, they don't know anything about your particle beam cannon, but, um, yeah, they, they see that your ship is bristling. Uh, for an exploration vessel, it's quite, it's quite well armed, to be quite honest. Um, but you, the, the, the three of you, and you're on the bridge, you notice that there is a sixth ship coming toward, uh, of a similar class design, small vessel, that's coming towards you from a different vector. And they immediately start to uh, open a hailing frequency. I talk a lot, so someone else has got to do this. I talk too much. So. So. So, I don't give a shit. Who's our comms guy? Sarda? No, no. I mean, I've, I'm, I'm, I've, I've, any of us can respond. I've got a zero, but I mean, anybody can talk over the comms. I think is what he's saying. Yeah. So, yeah. so just sort of, it, how can, how can we help? Um, how can we? It, it comes back very similar uh, to what the other five ships started with. Um, but they say specifically, they say, "Greetings, unknown starfarers. We welcome you to our territory. We invite a discussion of possibilities. We offer trade, hospitality, exchange of work and knowledge." Make known your needs. Oxygen. <laughs> we need air. No, well, we, we need we, air. Uh, we need fuel. We need. Uh, uh, we can't land. I need, I need corn. We, you know, we need to know the I best place to land. I need barley. We can't, <laughs> we can't land the deep night. The deep night is. Yeah. A, yeah. We need. The, we need to know the best place to to, to deposit, take these people. Uh, refuge. So survivors the, so these, the, these beings uh, so the other uh so the other five ships uh they all tell you that they that there is a city on their world and they they give you a, a planetary um uh, beacon uh and the city is called dari alkin and they tell you that 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 city is fully prepared to accept uh the refugees and the three breeders and uh and that they Four. will Dude, okay, dude that's on you. Yeah, that's on you. <laughs> they, and they are fully prepared to um, accept uh, accept those refugees. The sixth ship um, says uh, that they would like to dock uh, with Deep Night Revelation, and um, and they have a delegation aboard that would that would like to uh, tour your ship and meet you. Can I? We're really so, crowded right now. So part we, of the, it, the one thing that you have all noticed is that these guys, the sixth ship, all the other five ships, they they have welcomed you to their home place. The sixth ship doesn't say that. It says, "Welcome to our territory." It's warriors. I would assume, uh, and that will make an ass out of me. We, yeah. I'm going to respond and just basically say uh, we'd be happy to show you around. However, we need to first re, um, uh, allow all the, the survivors off the ship. We're, we're very crowded at the moment. Uh, and he, he says uh, this uh, communication that comes back, uh, he introduces himself as Earl Zinn. And he says uh, he, he completely understands. Um, he says, he says, uh, please, please excuse my inexperience. Uh, I have never conducted uh, diplomacy with an alien species before. Um, and he says, um, I, I'm doing my best. He says, no, but I understand uh, that you are probably overwhelmed. Um, we can remain in orbit around, uh, you know, in formation with Deep Night Revelation while you ferry um or or do whatever you're going to do to get the refugees back to the planet and we can we can wait perfect get the transporter going scotty <laughs> yeah 
So yeah, I mean, you're you're talking about uh, all your small craft just shuttling people down to the surface. Are are, are the are the people on the six ship? Are you guys uh, are you guys rejects or or what? What are you? Uh. Uh, he said he he refers to his people um, in a vague sense. He says that um, he says we don't um, our people don't recognize uh, the concept of rejectees like others do. Hmm. Do you guys explore and jump and everything else off on these random missions that are dangerous for no apparent reason? Or what? Are you a more structured <laughs> environment? He says, um, he says, at one time we did. He says, um, our, um, our goals are much more focused now. What about breeders? Do you have mindless breeders or do your breeders generally possess some type of thought of <laughs> communication? Uh... He says that he would he would much rather discuss this in person. Man, I might want to take Eve over there. Well, they're less likely to burn her as a witch, most likely. That's what. Yeah, maybe I should uh, get get the Pinnacle uh, in in a, in a pilot and go visit them. Well, I mean, once we get these. I mean, it's not going to take that many trips to get rid of, what is it? It's like 700. It's like 700. Yeah. It's like 700 refugees, right? Yeah. Five, All right. Five yeah. Hundred. Fair hundred. Enough. yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's only a few trips and let's, and then we'll meet with them. And I think you should bring your new Eve. daughter. Eve. <laughs> the abomination. No, Eve, the smart. <laughs> Yeah, the evolved breeder. I mean, she's golden to the species. Fire so. bad. Oh. <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. So over the course of you know a day, day and a half, um, your small craft, uh, the pinnaces and the uh, boats. Uh, ferry down all of these um, these these refugees. Uh, the the breeders uh, th there's not much of a a fight getting the breeders onto the small craft this time. Uh, they the three breeders that were on your ship are terrified. They don't like being on your ship, and the idea of getting off of your ship is fantastic to them, and they. Being even with animalistic intelligence, they are smart enough to know what their planet is and when they see it, and are quite happy to go back there. Um, so you, you about a day and a half, you get reports back um, from um, your your groundside crews. Uh, where is it? So this is uh, Donny Alkin or Dari Alkin. Uh, their cities are uh, quite, quite strange looking, um, and um, they, they, your ground crews note that there's, it seems like there's a lot of uh, uh, low-lying grass and mosses on this planet, um, but there, but they have noted uh, coming in that there are uh, herd, wild herds of animals grazing, and um, so uh, they, they don't foresee any difficulty in. Um, in um, reprovisioning, reprovisioning the ship, right? Uh, Sounds they, wonderful. They tell you that the weather's great. Uh, a little, it's a little wet. It seems to be a, like a misty rain almost all the time, but um, they, they welcome it. You know. Sounds like uh, better than walking around on low humidity um, yeah, spaceship for all the time. We right. could probably start R and R rotations. Yeah, yeah, uh, and they do tell you. They say uh, that it looks like um, the population, uh, and and they 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 use the term loosely because they don't know, they can't determine if anybody's in charge. But it looks oh. like they're trying to set up some kind of parade or something for you guys. Yeah, well, we'll be we'll be to check that out. 
we have to do a, a quick quick talk with these other people before we go down to the surface, right? So, yeah, I mean, are, are you giving them clearance to land? Is that your plan? I mean... I, yeah, I'm cool. I'm yeah. Cool with yeah. Let's let's let's. Are we gonna yeah. take the scout ship down? No, no, no. Let's let's meet with these guys that want to meet with us. Yeah. So their their small uh, Alakaya ship lands in your in your docking bay, and uh, a, a delegation of about six of these um, of these uh, Alakaya come off and. Um, uh, Earl Zinn uh, yeah, introduces yeah. himself. He's clearly a thinker. Um, I mean, he you can you have been around enough of them. You can you can kind of tell them apart. Um, and he is uh, he is it, it's him. And there's another thinker. And then there are four warriors with them. And um, he he introduces himself and he says um, he said something about uh, he says uh, so my people uh, we would like to discuss with you um, you, you had a question about uh, intelligent breeders that's right it's apparently you guys have a recessive gene that was found in the breeders that we had in, uh, and in I happen to have Eve here, who's I I copied one of the breeders, and uh, I got Eve. But that recessive gene is now a dominant Express. gene, I think it's or something. And uh, oh, it's a double recessive, so it's expressed. Here, here she is. So he he unfortunately he, I, I used to be a, I used to be a science teacher so I, I get I wander off. His, his, <laughs> his eyes get kind of big and he turns to the other thinker and they kind of whisper back and forth between each other and you you guys immediately notice the the other or the four warriors um, they also seem a little bit uh, more intelligent or not necessarily intelligent they seem more organized than the warriors that you have run into before like like they almost they almost when they come off the ship they almost march in formation yeah um and and they are kind of looking around uh in your hangar and they're looking around at you know there's of course uh security personnel and whatnot and they are very interested in linking at them and um, Earl Zen, after consulting with this other, uh, uh, I want to read some surface thoughts. Um, okay, uh, so go ahead and make your read surface thoughts check. And while you're doing that, he he starts to kind of clumsily ask. He's looking around and he says, uh, "You know, can you?" He says, "You're you're capable of of creating breeders." And he says, oh, "That's that's amazing. Can you?" Can you tell me more about your ship? Do you do you have weaponry? Well, yes, we do. Uh, well, we space right been run to rough and tumble place. Uh, it's it's really smart to have weaponry uh, and be prepared. We've dealt with all hostile types of things, and uh, I got a good role, by the way. Yeah, so. I saw that. Yeah. I find it interesting. They must not have any predators in their half history. Uh, he and he addresses us. Says actually, uh, we we were the apex predator on our world, and we we kind of um, our species evolved to uh, learn to kind of cultivate rather than destroy. Uh, but he says, uh, he then makes this weird comment, and he says, but we have, my people have learned that sometimes you have to destroy in order to create. Um, reading surface thoughts. Um, yes, they're, they're the ones that sabotage the ship. You get some, yeah, you get some disturbing stuff. Um there is uh, a thought of, um, 
and, and this is a bit nebulous, but it is a thought about having to um, having to move forward with the plan sooner uh, than was originally originally detailed, uh, like immediately. And um, you you have you're getting um, service thoughts on um, like they are interested in um, getting um, or making a trade deal to get some of your weapons. Yeah, so uh, so so you're interested in reading uh, in getting a trade deal with us in order to get weapons. He says, uh, mm, well, he says, yes, yes. He says, it is my understanding that you you have uh, gone to the city of Dari Al-Kin? Is that correct? I, I haven't gone to any city. Where we drop the people off. Yeah, we've well, we got people, people going off. there. We been there. Yeah, says, I've been on the ship. He says, our people have poor relations with the people of that city. And he says, um, um, he says, if if you would like, uh, we have a, a much better uh, location, the city of Kadiaz. Uh, we would be happy to welcome you there if you wanted to discuss trade for for weaponry. He says, I, I, so you have something better than than the than the jump, proto jump drive too. Well. The thing is, it says how far can you jump? Well, you're asking a lot of really technical questions, but I have uh, uh, an idea. Uh, tell me what your intentions are with all this technology. Are you wanting to take over all your people and rule them in a new way? Are you wanting to be? I mean, all the weaponry and everything, with everybody else being peaceful. I, I'm not necessarily sure I can just jump right on board with such a violent and ruthless nature that you're sure you can do you're a fish man you're a dolphin man <laughs> dolphins, no, dolphins, no, dolphins are pretty no. uh, violent in their own right uh, uh, <laughs> just, just mind you i mean the fact that i knew to bring up this conversation i, I can read your mind so and he finds that threat, he, he finds that threat, fascinating too yeah. he, he makes a comment along the lines of Oh, is there anything your people can't do? No. And he <laughs> he says um, he says uh, we can't get rid of fungus among us. And he he's confused by that. Well, that would be explained. Uh, we, we're going to give you know we can give these people a copy of our of our uh, Fallout videos. Okay. Yeah. Um, and stuff. So well, you give uh, them a copy of that, and the, the second uh, thinker starts going over that. And uh, or, or blah, blah, blah. I, and uh, while that's going on, I switch over to the ship frequency and and have four marines go uh, set up at the door out of the hangar so they can't leave them. Right, they I don't leave the hangar. Man. I don't necessarily want to go to where their people are and all that. I mean, we can we can trade remotely and give them, so, you know, a, a push and a technological advantage, and and give them the information on the mold. I I think Eve will be more proper, prosperous in their current bullshit society. She could she could be a really strong force of forming up things, but if these people are smarter. She might be better be able to push forward with them. So Earl Zinn is very uh, interested in meeting uh, who you're calling Eve, and he he does go into a bit of uh, explanation. He says that uh, that his people have breeders that are intelligent in the manner that you are describing Eve. Is he telling the truth? I should still be reading his surface thoughts. Uh, surface thoughts last 1D times 10 seconds. I would... S yeah, I'll say that, yeah. Um, you can tell. He is he is describing uh, their breeders. They are intelligent breeders. 
And um, he he tells you that the reason why their people uh, don't have very good relations with Dari Alkeen is that um, the people of Dari Alkeen don't seem to recognize that breeders can be intelligent. I will I will summon Eve. Okay. You know, or just like... wait right here and I'll go and I'll get bring Eve and walk her out uh to the to the hangar and I'll be like these these will be your people and uh and I'll I'll give her a translator uh thing so she can uh learn to talk to these people in her own time and way. She's smart enough. She's strong enough. She can do this. So yeah, he he basically describes it as that the people of Daryl Keen um, and and really the majority of the planet um, they 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 don't believe that breeders can be more than they are, and uh, he says that through um, and he 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 admits it, freak accident, uh, which you know evolution. Um, a intelligent breeder was created and in turn she created more and so there is this small faction of these uh that uh um that he describes as the intelligent breeders and a group of people that follow them they because the inbre the breeders are intelligent um well everybody can make a recon plus intellect check I don't realize what's going on. I'm, <laughs> I I'm stunned it. by their shuttle. I'm right, looking yes. around, looking into their soul. So, okay, so so Bocephus and Sarda, um, it dawns on you that um, a lot of, uh, well, first of all, these guys seem a lot more organized than the rest of the Alakaya. And it dawns on you that the reason for this is because their breeders are intelligent and telling them, you know, what needs to be done, where to go, how to do it. The other thing that you that uh, when Bocephus, when you when you were reading his thoughts, the other part that you kind of gathered in his jumble of thoughts was that they have uh, a much stronger uh, reverence for their for the intelligent breeders than the regular Alakaya do for theirs. Uh, the regular Alakaya, of course, have reverence for their breeders because their breeders are the heart of their community. These guys are on a worship level. Like, their breeder, their intelligent breeders are near goddesses. Well, you know, maybe I can ask my engineers to present you with a package of information and the ability to translate it. Uh, with the translator and Eve, and uh, and you can you can learn to make your own weapons rather than uh, trade with us and our resources, because as you will see, we are on a very important mission to save all life. We've come a very long way, and we are just passing through. If we fail, all of your people will die. <laughs> That's not necessarily incorrect. Um, so, so this kind of catches him off guard, and is, he wants to know uh, his his other the other thinker um, kind of goes over and shows him the the screen with the video that you gave him, and um, and he wants to know way more about about the deep night entity. He, this. He, it, first of all, he, it terrifies him because um, from what it, this video is describing is that this will destroy all life on the world. And yes. At, 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 at the detriment of destroying itself. And so it, it seems like it has it, it is just wanton destruction for destruction's sake. And that terrifies him. Um, it, it's, it, it'll go through. It'll, it'll jump. It'll jump on your ships and jump with you and go infect next systems. This has happened many times before. And they both kind of hang their head, kind of in like, 
<laughs> like in a Galaxy Quest, but, oh, those poor people. When they're talking about Gilligan's Island, oh, those poor people. They kind of hang their heads. Up. They're like, oh, my God, our breeders. This would yeah. this would kill our breeders. And then the, the hangar doors open, and two Marines step in with Eve. And all the, the entire delegation of these guys <laughs> all kind of kneel before Eve. And she, yeah. she seems rather confused by all of this. These are now your people, Eve. You'll have to learn to communicate with them. I'm going to give you, drop you off here, dear. I'm giving you all the information that you need and the ability to to be all that you can be, and it'll be special. So she um, she thanks you. Yeah. Um, she's a little apprehensive and scared to go with these people. She didn't know them, um, but she. She accepts that. Um, she has read or gone through the the digitals of uh, the books that you gave her. Oh, um, and I'm giving her. I'm giving her fucking a, a a ton of fucking badass information on a hard drive and a translator and a small handheld computer. Well, and she she thanks yeah. you because the text that you gave her, um, she tells you that she has learned uh, from that. Um, she says it realized she realized that that these were essentially manuals on how to conduct these affairs she says yeah. but in reality what she learned from it was that these were manuals on what not to do don't get to these levels well there you go be fruitful and multiply my child and so the delegation of course welcomes eve onto their ship and they uh before departing um uh earl zinn uh gives you coordinates to the city of kadiaz and and gives you a calm frequency and he says you know when you are ready to to meet with us send us a communication we will give you landing coordinates and uh, uh we we hope to conduct trade with you well i, I think I think we just gave you the golden goose, man. I mean, <laughs> but you, I mean, really, if you knew what I've just done for you, you would be gathering whatever it is the fuck you think you could muster to tell me your appreciation, and you would just be I th bringing that to me. I think right now we're just looking for basic food stuff. Yeah, we just need a whole bunch of food. You need to get right. it brought. And, and the city of uh, Dari al Keen has you covered with that. Yeah. And water. Yeah, so we've already got all that. We'll have to go. Uh, we'll have to go get fuel elsewhere. I imagine. It's, well, yeah, there's, a, there's a gas giant system. That yeah, you yeah. I, I'll just tell the dude, man. You know, hey, man. You know, before we before we uh, go on, uh, we will we will holler at you. But uh, you know, you need to take care of Eve, and you need to make her comfortable because I will be very displeased if I see she's not happy when I show up. Oh, she will be taken care of with the utmost reverence. I have I have blessed her. She kind of she kind of looks over her shoulder with a hesitant face as she boards their shuttle. Yeah. Make sure she knows that these are the ones that blew up the other ship. Yeah, we can tell Eve all that shit. She knows our language. We she can didn't experience it, so yeah. I don't know if I'd matter to her. Yeah. Well, I mean, just I want her to have a good idea of how shysty these people are that she's joining. Well, she's going to lead them. Yeah, awesome. I got. I mean, well, if, I, if she's you, not murdered by the other two, the the other uh, so mother. So really, uh, and I, 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 this is going to, I'm metagaming a bit here, but uh, Bocephus threw a bit of a curveball monkey wrench uh, that was not foreseen in this scenario. <laughs> uh, so we're going to go ahead and stop here. We'll pick this up next week uh, with you guys uh, getting a parade. All right. Down on uh, in the city of uh, Dari Al Keen. Yeah. Sounds like a wonderful thought. They even have clothes. Yeah, they, they well, they're mostly naked, but they have some clothes. <laughs> yeah, they look like a nice and peaceful people. Yeah. They're going to get taken over by the other sect. So that's funny. 
Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, good old fashioned. No, no, that's <laughs> true. probably true. <laughs> They're doomed. Yeah. yeah. All right. But we well, can we can eat their food. Yeah, I mean, their diet's not that different from what you eat. Yeah. Sounds, yeah, going to have a good time. And we'll give them the same bullshit information. Well, it's not bullshit. We'll give them the same information we gave the other people, kind of. We won't give them an Eve. <laughs> you won't give them Eve. They wouldn't know what to do with her. They would possibly kill her. I'm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll pick this up next week at 7 o'clock on Friday night, and uh, we'll we'll see how far this goes. All right. Take care. Thanks right. for running. Have a good night, guys. See you next week. Well, good night.